Hi everyone and welcome back to Yarn Hook Needles. Today I am showing you how to make this Tunisian crochet basket weave stitch. Um, it's really simple. The only two things you need to know how to do are to make the knit stitch in Tunisian and the purl stitch in Tunisian. And so this is the front. This is actually a scarf that I'm making up that uh, will be posted on my blog for free as a pattern very soon. But today we're just gonna cover a small swatch and exactly how to go about making this. So first I wanna show you what it looks like. It looks very similar to a knit piece um, as far as the stitches go on the front. But if you turn it over, you obviously can tell that it's definitely not knit, that it is Tunisian because you don't have a mirroring effect on the back. So for today's tutorial, if you want to achieve the similar gauge and everything, I am using an eight millimeter um, Tunisian hook, and this is from the Love to Crochet, which is Denise Interchangeables. I got this on Amazon, and I'll link that down below if you wanna check out this set. I really like it. It's got the locking mechanism so that you don't have to worry about your uh, string coming undone and then it also has the little stopper that is removable on the end and then I just chose some worsted weight yarn or size 4 yarn for this project so with that being said get your tools or just sit and relax as I teach you how to make the Tunisian crochet basket weave stitch okay so for today I am using this new lion brand ferris wheel yarn I really loved the color patterns and I thought that it would look really awesome in the basket weave. I've zoomed you in so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So this particular stitch works in a multiple of four and so all we're going to do is just create our slip knot and for this swatch we're just going to cast uh, 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, oops, 19 and 20. Got my little ball over here trying to move around. Okay, so in the second chain from the hook, We've got one, two. We're just gonna work our first row as normal. You just insert your hook, yarn over and draw up a loop. And remember it's Tunisian, so we're not getting rid of these loops. These loops just stay on our hook. So it's just insert, yarn over, draw up a loop. Insert, yarn over, draw up a loop. And just continue doing that all the way across. So this is kind of our base row or our setup row. And if you've never done Tunisian before, don't worry. Um, you can definitely get the hang of it. No problem. It's not as hard as it looks. My little ball just keeps wanting to flop all around. So we just keep working our way through these chains. And this, um, if you're using the eight millimeter hook and the worsted weight or size four yarn, this is a great size for a scarf. So one of the things about Tunisian is however many you chain is how many loops you always wanna maintain on your hook. So for our swatch, we chained 20. So we wanna make sure that we have 20 loops on our hook. So just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we're good to go. So this row is called the standard reverse row. And this is kind of the um, backwards working row that we'll do in between each of our right to left rows. So all you do to work this is just a yarn over pull through one, then it's a yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and you just do the yarn over, pull through two, all the way across. 
it's only that very first stitch where it's a yarn over pull through one. So you just keep doing this for your standard reverse row and all of the standard reverse rows are worked the exact same way. Nothing will change there. And we end the row with one loop on our hook. Now this counts as your first chain. So whether you're doing a purl stitch or a knitting stitch, this guy never gets technically worked. Um, it just stays there and just is kind of like a placeholder, if you will. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to work knit stitches. So this is our first one. It's already done for us, you know, cause it's just a placeholder stitch. And then right here you see this vertical bar. Now typically in Tunisian, you are working under that vertical bar. You would do something like this but because we're making knit stitches, we actually want to work right there in between. So you would insert your hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, just like that. And you do the same thing into the next stitch. Do you see right there, that space right there? That's where you would work the next knit stitch. You yarn over and draw up a loop. So now we've got three. And then one more knit stitch, and we're gonna do it right there in that space. Yarn over, draw up a loop, and we've got four. That's the first knit section of our basket weave. So now, working in the vertical bars right here, we're gonna work a purl. So what you do is you bring your yarn to the front, and these might look a little wonky at first, but just be patient with yourself. You're gonna get the hang of it. So we've got our four right here into this vertical bar. We've pulled our yarn forward. We're gonna insert our hook. We're gonna take the yarn and wrap it around like that and pull it through. So I'll do the next three slowly. We're gonna go into the vertical bar, so make sure your yarn is to the front. Go into that vertical bar. Bring your yarn and wrap it around like that. Pull that through. So there's two pearls and you can see there's kind of like a little hump right there. Bring your yarn to the front. Go into the next vertical bar. Wrap your yarn like so. There's three pearls. And then one last one, yarn to the front Go into that vertical bar, wrap your yarn back around to the front, and there you go. And you can see one, two, three, four. You've got four little humps. And then the next four, we work those knit stitches. So we're looking, we can see our vertical bars, and right there in between is where we work our knit. So real simple. And then in the next one, And then into the next one. And into the next one. And that's one, two, three, four. And then again, here we are with pearls again. Bring your yarn to the front. Insert into the vertical bar. Wrap the yarn. Just like that. Yarn to the front. Insert your hook, bring it around, just like that. Yarn to the front. And just keep working. We've got one more, yarn to the front. And once you get the hang of how the yarn wraps, it goes pretty quickly. And now we just need four knits and the last four. So there, right there is where we put our knit stitch. And then another knit stitch, another one, and then a knit in the last one. And be sure that you grab, you see how you have these two on the end? Be sure that you grab both of those. And you go like that. And so now, 
we work our standard reverse row just like we did before. We take yarn over, pull through the first one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and just yarn over, pull through two with all of them. Just like so. So whenever you're doing the basket weaves, you do four um, right to left rows of the knits and purls. So again, let's do the next row. So we do, um, this counts as our first knit. So once you get that first row, you can kind of see where your knits need to go. See, they would go right there in those spaces. So you just insert your hook, yarn over and draw up a loop. Insert your hook, yarn over, draw up a loop. Insert, yarn over, draw up a loop. So there's our four knits. And remember that first loop counts as one. And now we need to do the purls. So remember, bring your yarn to the front. Insert your hook underneath that vertical bar, wrap the yarn around, yarn to the front, insert under the vertical bar, wrap the yarn, yarn to the front, insert under the vertical bar, wrap, and then one more for four, just like that. So we've got our four pearls right there. And then we do four knit. And those are real simple and easy. And then we've got four pearls again, so it's a yarn in the front. Just like that. So there's our pearls, and then four knit. So one, two, three, and then make sure you grab the two on the end for the last one. And then standard reverse row. Yarn over, pull through one, and then it's yarn over, pull through two for the rest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two more right to left rows and then I'm going to show you how you start the next series um, of starting with the opposite. Okay, so I've done a total of four of the right to left rows. So you can see we kind of have one, two, three, four of those uh, bumps, if you will, from the purl rows. So now, whether you begin with purl or knit, it really doesn't matter. It's up to you. The idea is the same. So since we started with the, the faux knit stitches, what we're going to do now is we're going to begin the next set of four right to left rows with a standard reverse row in between each of them. We're going to start with purl. So again, this one doesn't really do anything. It's just kind of a placeholder. So whether you're beginning with purls or knits, it stays the same. So we're going to work our purls just like we did over here. So we're going to bring our yarn to the front. We've got one, so we're going to go into this next bar right here, and we're just going to wrap our yarn, bring our yarn to the front, go into that next vertical bar, and wrap it around, bring our yarn to the front, the next vertical bar, and wrap around. So we've got four total sitting right there. Now these were the pearls that were worked up. And so right there in that space, that's where we work the knit. So there's one, two, three, and four. So there's our knits. And now we need to begin purls here. So yarn to the front, insert into that vertical, wrap it around, yarn to the front, just 
just wrap it around, making those pearls. Um, right there. Just keep making your pearls. And then we've got four knits right there. And then the last four are pearls. So here into the front, wrap it around. And don't forget, you gotta go into the two and wrap it and pull through both of those. And then standard reverse row is the same. Yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two as you work your way across. So very, very simple. And I actually really love how you can see all of the shades in this Ferris wheel using this basket weave stitch. And I will link to the Lion Brand site down below so you can check out the Ferris wheel for yourself. It's really nice, very pretty, easy to work with, doesn't come unspun or anything like that. Really simple. So let's do another row together. So these first rows are pearl rows. Our first one is done for us. And we're just working those remaining three pearls. Next, we're doing the four knits. And just remember, it's just kind of in between both of those. Four pearls. And then four knits. Make sure you pull your yarn to the back when you work your knits. And then four pearls in the last four. And always remember in that last one you want to grab the two loops on the end. And go through both of those and then standard reverse row so this is really all the basket weave is it's just combinations of knit and pearl stitches in the Tunisian and if you want to make a scarf you sim and you use the same hook size and the same yarn weight um, doing 20 will be absolutely perfect to achieve the width that you want. So already you can see how we've got the flat parts coming up. Um, and like I said, the Ferris wheel is really pretty in that you can see the color changes. Um, and then if you were wanting to, I'm gonna pull this swatch back, this one that I'm working on for the blog. Um, and it shows very well too in solid colors, which I love that. So if you were wanting to finish off the row, I'm just gonna use this bigger piece. So whatever, um, whatever you started with, this is how you would do it. So we started with pearls on the previous row, so we would just kind of do the same thing. Get ready to work a pearl like this, but instead of going through just one loop, we're actually gonna pull through the whole thing. So you would work another pearl, just like normal, and just pull through both of those loops. So you're kind of casting off, you're closing those stitches. So put it into the next one and work your pearl, but just make sure you only have one loop on your hook at the end of the stitch. So here's a knit one. We do knit and we just pull it all the way through. Here's a knit one and just kind of come all the way through. So always making sure 
that you only have one loop on the hook. So if you're doing purls, make sure that you close it off with a purl stitch. And if you're doing knits, you close it off with a knit stitch. So just like that, very simple, very easy. And it all looks nice and, oops, that's a purl. So pay attention, <laughs> don't do like what I just did. Work the wrong stitch. So you would just do that all the way across. Oops. Pull it through. And then your last one, just make sure you grab those two. And there you go. And then you would just snip that off and weave in your end, but that's how you would end it. So really, really simple. So again, if you want to check out this Ferris wheel yarn that I used, or you want to look at the hook set, those links will be down below. And um, if you're following me on Instagram, that's the best place to get updates about when patterns go live on the blog. Um, sometimes I'm not able to update here on YouTube quite as good. But uh, Facebook and Instagram will be linked down below as well. Be sure you're following me. Uh, give this video a like and share it with your maker friends who are interested in learning Tunisian. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.